Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at how to add motion blur in Premiere Pro. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free video templates and assets ready to download. I've put a link in the description down below, so make sure to head on over and grab some free stuff. Now, over the years, we've covered different parts of this topic in different videos along the way, but we wanted to condense all of that information down into just one video. We want to make sure that you know all of your options for adding motion blur in Premiere Pro to make your videos their absolute best. And really, it comes down to two different kinds of motion blur. You have the kind of motion blur where you actually create it by moving things around your frame. Things like text, things like whipping a piece of footage off screen, or just zooming into your subject. Then there's the kind of motion blur that you can sort of add as a bit of a fake to elements that you have a little bit less control over. A really common example is when you want to enhance a particular part of your shot, but it's baked into the rest of your footage that you've already shot. And then at the very end, we want to show you a little bit of a bonus. If you have access to Adobe After Effects, we want to show you some of the even more powerful tools you have there for motion blur to really take your footage up to the next level. But that's enough talking. Let's jump right into it. Okay, here we are in Premiere Pro. And the first effect that we're gonna go over is if you wanna manually move things around like text or your video's framing. If you wanted to adjust your footage to start here and end here, a lot of you might jump to using keyframes and setting a start and end position. You can do that, but you can also do exactly the same movement with the transform effect. Go down to your effects panel and look up the transform effect under the distort folder. Drag and drop it onto your clip, and now you can adjust those same parameters as before, except with the transform effect, here further down in your effect controls panel. From there, when we set the same in and out keyframes, we don't see any difference. But the magic happens when we go down here to the parameter called shutter angle. Right now it should be set to zero, but you can manually key in a higher shutter angle to get motion blur with this effect. So let's key in 180, and then also uncheck use composition shutter angle and you can see that our motion now has motion blur associated with it. We keyed in 180, but you can choose any number between 0 and 360 to get different severities of motion blur. 0 is no motion blur, and 360 would be the maximum you can generate from this effect, but that high might be a little too extreme. 180 seems to be what most people agree is the most pleasing when all said and done, but it's really up to your own personal taste. Lastly, the speed of the motion and how much space is in between your keyframes will impact how much this motion blur shows up. If you have a really fast whip from start to finish, you'll end up with a large amount of motion blur. But if you make the movement really slow by dragging the keyframes so that they're farther away from each other, you may end up getting no real distinguishable motion blur at all. So keep that in mind. So now that you know this method, you can apply it in whatever way that you need to create motion blur. If you want to have your frame whip off screen, you can keyframe it with the transform effect, and then use the shutter angle to add some motion blur to make it feel more real. This also has the added benefit of automatically reading into any changes that you make. So if you decided to change the acceleration of the movement with this graph module here, your transform effect will actually recognize the difference in speed between frames and adjust the motion blur accordingly. Pretty neat, right? And like we mentioned before, this effect also works with text and graphical elements. Next up, we should take a look at how to add fake blur to your pre-shot footage. Let's say for example we have the shot where we circle around a steeple, and we end up giving it a speed ramping effect to really give it some energy. If you want to learn how to create a speed ramping effect, we actually have a video all about that, and you can check it out if you want to learn more. But for right now, we've got this effect, a lightning fast speed ramp. In reality, if we were going to see this happen in real time, there would be a lot more motion blur happening as things whipped past the camera. But because we digitally sped it up, everything is still super sharp and in focus. So for this situation, we could add directional blur. Go over to your effects panel and search for a directional blur. Now drag and drop it onto your footage. And in your effects controls panel, you should have two different parameters. You have your direction and amount. Let's start with the amount just to see what it does. You can see that when we increase the amount, we stretch the blurriness of the image, but only in one direction. If we leave the amount here as it is, and then start to rotate the direction, we can see how the blur is impacted. Now, for our situation, we have a horizontal movement, left to right and right to left. So by setting our direction to exactly 90, 
we have an exactly horizontal motion blur. So this is what we have now. But right now this blur is happening all throughout the whole shot. So we need to add some keyframes for the amount. Go to where the speed ramp is just about to start and click the stopwatch to activate a keyframe and set it to zero. Now go a few frames forward to where the speed ramp reaches its maximum intensity and bring the amount up to your desired level. For me, it's about 20. Next up, go to the end of the speed ramp and do the reverse. Right where it's about to start slowing down, make another keyframe, set it to 20, and then go a few frames forward to where it's back to normal speed and set the amount to zero. Now with all of that, our effect starts like this, and now it looks something like this. This difference might look small at first, but it makes a big impact to how your footage feels. By adding some sound effects like a whooshing noise, you can really sell this effect. Sometimes all you really need is just a subtle addition or two to make your effects come to life. But there are some effects that you can't really pull off as effectively inside of Premiere Pro. Like for example, if you have a clip that's zooming forward continuously and you wanna have a bit more of an intense zoom blur feel to it. For situations like this, we're gonna pop in a little bonus here so that you can see how to actually take advantage of the tools that are available inside of Adobe After Effects. By taking a clip or set of clips in question, highlighting them, and then right clicking and selecting Replace with After Effects Composition. From here, you're taken into After Effects where you can use the effect called CC Radial Blur. This will simply take the entire frame and give it a particular type of radiating effect. And for our example, I'm simply going to take the type and set it to straight zoom. And you can see what we're going for here. And here I'll just set the center of the effect to where it's radiating out from right about here. Then I'll create a mask around the center point, where it would be a little less blurry because it's farther away from the camera, invert the mask, and set the composition options of the CC radial blur effect to the mask we just created. And we've taken our effect from this to this. Great. And then finally, if you just want After Effects to do all of the motion blur work for you, for a variety of different situations, you have Pixel Motion Blur. When you add this effect to a clip, you can set the shutter angle like we did in our first example, except we now have two additional quality controls shutter samples, and vector detail. By increasing each of these, you can prevent artifacts and banding from happening within your frame. This effect is incredibly power hungry and will require your computer to work a lot and will probably take a lot of time to process. But if you let it work its magic, it can come up with some effects that look something like this. And the best part is that now all of the work that we've done in After Effects here is immediately available inside of our Premiere Pro project. And guys, I hope you really enjoyed that tutorial on how to add motion blur to your footage, both in Premiere Pro and a couple little bonus tools inside of After Effects. If you guys like this tutorial, consider liking it, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and as always, we have tons of other great stuff over here at motionarray.com. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thank you.